guys, it's a proud cat lover and I'm back with another care video and today it's going to be leopard geckos. So I'll start out with the top of the list. A 20 long tank would be what would work the best. But if you're like me, you don't have room for 20 long, then I have an 18 by 12 by 18 which is that tank that's over there in the corner. And uh, it has worked good for me so far. It just is not very big when it comes to floor space for her to walk. It just has enough room for what she needs and that's it. And I don't really like that. So once the snails, which are in this tank here where Roxanne's sitting, are dead, I'll get a 20 long to replace this tank because I know the desk is big enough for a 20 long. Because I feel bad having small tanks for my reptiles. Like over here, I'm turning this tank that's right there into I'm splitting it and making it a tank for my crested geckos because it's way more room that they'll have even when it's split than what they have now. So I'm wanting to try to slowly upgrade my reptiles to bigger tanks that I can have room for because I feel bad for having them in small tanks. <laughs> um, but like I put here that 18 by 12 by 18 works good for now and if you have a baby or a juvenile leopard gecko then you'll definitely be enough room. You don't have to worry about that. But if you have an adult, then I would suggest if you have the space to get a 20 long. But if you don't, this does work until you do, like what I did. Uh, calcium, with or without D3, which I have both of them. I have the without D3 and it'll, I just get Zoomed. I mean, it's calcium. It's calcium, you know. And then I have the with D3. You can get the multivitamins, but I found that they don't like eating the feeder insect, if they're coated in, rep in the multivitamin, I guess it tastes weird to them or something. It doesn't taste good. So if you can put that in a food mix, then that'd be fine. Um, with me, I just only give the multivitamin to my crested geckos in their Pangea because it's mixed in, you know. I've never been able to get my leopard gecko to eat anything with that on it. And I've never put any of my food mixes, so, I mean, calcium normally is the main thing. I've tried every so often mixing it in with her calcium but then she doesn't touch it so only get multivitamins if you can actually get your reptile to use it or if you've got another reptile you could use it for then you'll have that just in case they don't want it a water bowl which I can show you all the stuff that is like in the tank what I've used I mean you don't have to use the exact same thing um they normally wait and drink water when they're in the evening when you're not watching them, you know, when everyone's asleep, because they are nocturnal. Um, feeding tweezers, which I have here. These are actually tweezers that I got um, at this website called BioQuip. And it even says it here on the handle, but you can't see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. Um, I actually, where I do entomology, I bought a tweezer kit. And these are actually insect tweezers to catch insects. And this one is dull tipped and I normally don't use it very often so I just clean it with alcohol and switch them over and this is what I use for my feeding tweezers. They do have tweezers you can buy specifically at like reptile stores but they're like this long and it's like that's just ridiculous. Who needs? Maybe for a snake. But for a leopard gecko who needs that long of tweezers? That's just ridiculous. And then they have wood ones. It's like, oh, I, I don't really like the wood ones because they're you can't clean them with alcohol. Once they're dirty, they're dirty. It's wood. So I'd suggest if you can find tweezers that are dull tipped and they're not real short or anything, then I'd invest in some. I know tweezers are kind of expensive when they're metal and they're a big pair, but they're worth it. <laughs> okay, let's see. A hot hide and a cold hide, which like I said, I'll show you in the tank, but it's pretty important to have both. Because in the reptile needs to be able to regulate its temperature because obviously reptiles are cold-blooded so they can't heat themselves up like us mammals can, which humans obviously are mammals. Um, so it's really important to have a cold hide and a hot hide. Having the cold hide at the opposite end of the tank so it's nowhere near the uh, heat pad. And having the hot hide directly over the heat pad. And of course you'll have bedding and stuff so it won't get too hot for your reptile. And if it does, it can get up and move. So, uh, and Blossom <laughs> is watching my green and old and talking. Um, my heat pad, which I just said, for one to five gallon tanks, and it gets up to 93 degrees with the bedding on top, which I use this thing here, and this is a digital point, uh, pointer thermometer, where you just kind of point this here at an area, and I have tested it against a normal thermometer, and it does read accurately, and I think it's, yeah, it's Zoomed. 
I actually got it on sale at uh, Pangea.com. I mean, PangeaReptile.com is actually what it is. But yeah, I found that one to five heat, uh, one to five gallon heat pads don't get real hot because I had a ten to twenty that I was using and it got over a hundred and five degrees. You don't want that. <laughs> That's really bad. It was so hot she wasn't going in there, and I was trying to figure out what was going on, and then I stuck my hand in there, and I was like, oh, I need to get a way different pad. So I got a 1 to 5, and it works great. She goes in there and lays on it without being uncomfortable and way too hot. So you don't want one that's going to be so hot they'll burn their stomach because their stomachs are really uh, uh, fragile. There's the word I'm looking for, so they will burn. Um, a thermometer and a hygrometer, and this is important because you don't want the humidity in the tank to be very high. You never will miss the tank, ever. Unless it's like, I don't think, I've never had to miss the tank before. That's what the moist tide is for. You don't ever have to miss the tank. Um, you don't want the humidity to be too high or you can like open the doors to it and just kind of let air pass through so it kind of dries it out. Um, thermometer obviously because you want the temperature in the air just to kind of be in the 70s so when it does have to use the cold hide it's not too cold in your area that you've got the tank um that way you're you know up to date and you know what's going on okay let's see we're right here next I think I believe yeah eco earth and I wrote it is safe no matter what people say because I've been told before you can't use eco earth if they eat it they could get impacted that is true but they have to eat a humongous amount of eco-earth because the people that produced it made it to where if they ate it, you know, and they were to catch a cricket and they eat in small amounts, which I would not suggest just throwing insects in their tank because that indefinitely will make them eat it. Um, I always like feeding mine, like I said, with tweezers because I like to be able to make sure that my reptile is actually eating the insect and the insect isn't burrowing into the eco-earth or getting away completely and just dying. So... I wouldn't suggest putting insects directly in there unless you're going to be there to monitor and make sure that the insect doesn't get away. But yeah, anyway, you can use EcoEarth. I have another type of bedding which I can show you, but I don't know where all it's available because I got it at a reptile show and it might only be available online. I don't think it's in stores yet, if it ever will be. So that's why I'm putting EcoEarth here. Um, a moist hide which these things I'll show you when I go to show the tank you can make because I bought a uh, uh, well I can't remember what the containers called that I bought but because uh, I paused to try to think about it and now I can't remember but it's a like a, a deal you buy that you can put sandwiches in to store them in the refrigerator <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember for the life of me a scoop now you may not know you know what I'm talking about because I have I'm going to show you Rose go away um but when I went to get my crested geckos I was told that I needed a scoop for them okay you don't need a scoop for crested geckos because when they poop and stuff it's going to go all over the place they don't go in one spot like a leopard gecko does so it's almost completely useless and you've got all of this foliage and stuff in the crested geckos tank and there's just no way of getting the poop and stuff out of there so this is the scoop I have, and I got it at Petco, so I'm assuming they still have them around. And this works amazing for getting the leopard geckos poop scooped up. And uh, where she only goes in one corner, I can get it all in one scoop. And it's really easy to clean instead of me having to wear gloves and picking the poop up or anything. So I'm glad that I was told that I needed that for my crested geckos because I had it when I got my leopard gecko. And that's when I actually was able to start using it for something more than a decoration. So crickets or dubia roaches, or both. I have both, but if I'm able to switch over to only dubias, I'm going to get rid of the crickets. Mainly because crickets are they're disgusting smelling. They are cannibalistic. They will eat each other if the other one is wounded or if food is short. Which I never leave shortage of food in there just because of that fact. Um... Dubias will cannibalize, but that's just with babies and if there's more than one male. If there is competitive males in the same tank with breeding females, they will eat each other's babies. But aside from that, they will not eat each other. Um, when they're, you know, if there's only one male and let's say four or five females, they won't eat each other. Um, or at least I've never seen it happen. I've never found any half-eaten carcasses or anything like I have with crickets. They're just not attractive insects. They're very uh, dirty. I mean, 
a lot of people say roaches are dirty, but that is a lie because they're way cleaner than my crickets, um, which is pretty hilarious. I wrote here that uh, you will need um, food for the feeder insects, which I have a video on a mix I put together, so you can check that out if you want. Uh, I put water crystals or carrots and celery because uh, carrots and celery are really high in water and uh, they both last a while before they start to mold or anything. I mean, I do change them out every three to four days because they will start to dry up, but uh, carrots will last a lot longer. The crickets and dubious really like them. And I'm having a hard time finding bulk water crystals for, you know, not a huge amount of money. So that's why I haven't bought any yet. <laughs> I know they're out there somewhere, but I want to be able to find a nice brand that's, you know, actually just water crystals. No, no other crap in there. Um, cleaner, which I have sitting out over here. And I don't use this brush, I just use a cleaning rag or a paper towel. But this is a uh, Fluker Super Scrub, and it's a Reptile Safe Soap. And there's a lot in there. It's almost completely full, because when you go to use it, what I do is I just kind of open the lid and I dab. Well, not dab. I take the wash rag, I put it over the lid, and I turn it upside down like this. And I do that about three times on three different parts of the wash rag. And the wash rag needs to be damp. And then you will scrub the entire tank once you've got all the stuff out of there. Then you'll rinse the rag down and rinse all that soap out and then you'll go back over the tank to get all the soap out of there. Then you'll go over it with a dry paper towel or a dry wash rag and uh, just to make sure that the tank is good and dry before you start putting stuff back in there. That's how I clean my tanks anyway. I'm real particular so I'm scrubbing really hard and stuff so um, mainly you don't really have to clean a leopard gecko's tank very often because all they do is poop in one corner. They don't get it real dirty like a crested gecko where they just are pooping everywhere like a bird does um, and peeing everywhere and they don't step in their food and make little footprints all over the tank like the crested ge geckos do because they will step in their Pangea no matter what and they will get footprints all over the tank. It's hilarious but it is a huge mess to clean. So they aren't really that dirty of a reptile so that's really nice because I only have to clean their tank like once every four months or something and that's just when I feel like it's getting stinky or it, it just needs cleaned or something you know so a spray bottle and a filtered and filtered water that's the next thing on the list um, and I just happened to have my spray bottle put up but I'll show you that later uh, but I just bought a spray bottle from Walmart that's in like the uh, laundry area where they have laundry baskets and uh, hangers and stuff. It's that part of the store. And, uh, yeah, that's where I got it. And you'll just, I use filtered water, but you can also use distilled water, I think. Rose, get back. But I, we just get filtered water at our house. My parents buy it, so I've just always used it. And it works good. It doesn't leave any water spots, and the reptiles really like drinking it. Because I have little dishes in there, which I'll also show you those because I forgot to put that on here. Um, that I get from Pangea and I put water in one dish and food in the other for the Crested Geckos. But, uh, yeah, a spray bottle and a filtered water and this will be only for the moist hides. You won't be using it for anything else. Um, a heat probe or a thermometer, which a heat probe is that digital thermometer that has a little probe that you can stick in the hot hide. And the digital thermometer, of course, I already talked about, is something like this and they can be anywhere from like twenty dollars like what I paid for this one all the way up to like the hundreds and Rose is staring at me while I'm talking it's kind of amusing okay so now I will show you the other stuff hey guys so I thought I'd throw this part in there real quick don't get a leopard gecko unless you're going to be willing <clears throat> willing to spend a lot of money because Everything's going to cost a lot of money. Don't be afraid to just kind of get stuff over time. Instead of thinking, I need to get it right now, right now, don't ever think like that. It took me five months to get my tank ready before I even had a leopard gecko. It took five months for me to get everything that I wanted, and then it was another two months before I even got a leopard gecko, because I wanted to wait and get the right one. And when I found Eclipse, it just felt right. And I'm so glad that I got her because she's a great leopard gecko. But like I'm saying, the point is, 
get everything ready ahead of time. And then if it takes a year, if it takes five months, however long it takes, don't rush into getting a leopard gecko because you don't want to get one that's sick. You want to get one that has all of its toes. You don't want a regenerated tail, which means that it's fallen off and grown back. You don't want stuck shed. You don't want the eyes to be droopy. You want to look for a really nice, healthy leopard gecko. So my advice is do not rush into anything. Take your time and get everything ready up to, you know, up to snuff, I should say, as some people here in America say, up to snuff. Uh, don't rush into anything because you want everything to be proper. From personal experience, don't rush into stuff and take your time. I also want to talk about feeding regimens or schedules for your leopard gecko. So what I do is I feed every two days, and depending on the age of your leopard gecko, it depends on how much you're going to be feeding. So let's say you have one that's one to six months old. You're want to, probably going to want to be able to feed from one to three months. You'll probably only be able to get to eat maybe a couple, maybe four crickets every other day. You will want to feed at least two crickets, um, if not more. If it'll take more, then yeah, give it some more. But if you only can get to eat two, that's okay. It is a baby from one to three months. Um, obviously, younger you'll want to feed it smaller prey than crickets. Um, Unless you can find it really small crickets, then that's different. But from, let's say, three to five months, then you'll want to try feeding a little bit more. Maybe, oh, two being the minimum. You'll want to definitely try to get to eat more than that. Maybe five to six being the max. Um, if it won't eat that much, just kind of gradually work up to that. Uh, obviously, you can feed mealworms, too, when they're young, but crickets obviously have more protein, so that's why I'm saying crickets. Um, from five months till, let's say, 12 months, you'll definitely want to try to be getting it to eat what an adult's going to be eating, which is around eight crickets. Um, I feed mine eight crickets and eight mealworms, but crickets are pretty filling, because um, at least that's why I found mine will only eat up to eight crickets right now. She would eat nine, but I feel like she just takes it because it's there. So, and mine is over a year old. So, depending on your reptile, you're going to want to try to feed it, like I just said, with those every two days when it's an adult, every other day when it's a baby um, and under five months, just to kind of fatten it up and get it to a good weight. You'll want to tail to kind of start to gain weight as well because the tail's where they're storing all of their food stores. So anyway, I thought I'd throw that in there as well just because I feel like I forgot to talk about it and it's pretty important to me because that's one thing that people are always asking is how often and how much do you feed? And that's my personal thing that I feed and I find that she gets pretty full on eight crickets and eight mealworms and she's almost two, so that's just my preference. If you end up being able to do something different, then all for it. But like I said, try when they're younger, um, one to five months, try to definitely get them to eat two if they won't eat anymore. Uh, when they get around to five months, like I said, try to get them to eat, you know, like five or six. So you definitely want to make sure that they're eating and if they are reluctant to eat, cut the insect's heads off. Um, you know, offer it when it's not stressful for them. Like if they're already out of the tank, I mean out of the hide, roaming around, then offer it to them. Don't ever let the cricket run around in the tank because that possibly can scare the babies. Um, and it can also nibble on their skin, which can hurt the baby when it's young. When they're older, they'll have tougher skin. They still will get annoyed, though, if they get chewed on by crickets, because so would I. So, anyway, that's my feeding regimen, and I thought I'd just let you guys know real quick, since I forgot to talk about it. So, yeah, thanks. Okay, guys. Oh. <laughs> yes, you're such a sweetie. So, this is the tank, and I'll show you. And like you can see here, it's just, it's not that big. And I, you can do this if you want, because leopard geckos do like to dig. I put a couple toilet paper rolls under the bedding and covered it so she can go in a little tunnel. This is her food, di her water dish, and you don't want to keep it completely full. Because they'll step up and they'll just kind of dip their neck down in there and they'll drink the water. 
Um, so you don't want it to be super full so they're not, you know, accidentally going to dip their head and they stick it all the way into the water. This is her moist hide, and this is what I was talking about, a sandwich container. You cut a hole, and then I covered it with tape so there's no sharp edges, and you just use a uh, sphagnum moss, which you can get at the reptile store, and you put a paper towel in the bottom just to kind of absorb any water that may not be absorbed by the moss. That way there's no standing water. This is her hot hide, which you can see she's in right now, and that is her cold hide, which you can see it's pretty big compared to the size of my hand. So, and the same with this. And this one, actually both of them were bought at PetSmart. This was bought at Petco, I think. But yeah, you can see this is her little dish of calcium, which you, like I said before, will need to leave out. She's coming out to say hi, how are you doing? She's like, don't touch me. Rose, I'm not talking about you. This is her corner right here that she goes to the bathroom, so that's why there's nothing there. You can see I have her thermometer and hygrometer here. Tells that right now the temperature is 71. The humidity is 50%. And you can buy a little LED light if you want, but you don't actually need a heat lamp. Do not use a heat lamp. <laughs> I should just say that. Don't use a heat lamp. You want a light that's not going to produce heat because it's not good for the, uh, the leopard gecko's skin. No matter what people tell you at the pet store, don't buy a heat lamp. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good for them. These are the little feeding cups that I get at Pangea and this time around I bought 250 of these because my crested geckos go through them really fast but they just are a little cup like this and they come in like two or three different sizes on Pangea's website um, but I have the small feeding uh, Roxy what are you doing? I have the small feeding station, whatever it's called, right here. So I have to buy the small ones. And you can see what I mean about the crested geckos just getting their food all over the place. But uh, this is the type of bedding that I use here. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you've probably already seen this. Premium pet bedding, the substrate. It's by... Uh, or at least I bought it from Dubia Roaches, which is this place that was at the pet show. I mean the reptile show. Pet show. So that's the bedding. I'll back up here for a second. But yeah, anyway, here's... Oh, now she came out. There she is, my little cutie. Um, And you will want to make sure that the area where the um, hot hide is, that you want to have something to kind of be there to block out light because she stopped using this just because light was coming in through that corner. <laughs> and sh I think she's like, someone can see me, I'm not going to go in there. So really, it's very informative. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's everything. I will show you guys real quick what I keep my crickets and dubias in because if you ever keep crickets or dubias, then, I mean, I'm going to be moving these guys to a storage tub. But for now, they're in this uh, spare Crested Gecko tank I have. Then I have this here, which I don't know how many gallons it is, but it's really big, as you can see. And I think it's the same size as that uh, gerbil one that I had down there for my gerbil. But, uh... You can see it gives them enough space that I can fit a uh, 9 count, which it was a 36, I'm pretty sure, but I s broke them in half and I can put 4 in here to make a little pyramid. You can see here I've got some carrots in there, their food dish is there in the middle. So that's their container and I normally have to clean it, oh, how much times, probably once every 2 to 3 days because they just poop so much and they just grab the food and they just run around with it so they get it everywhere it's just a huge mess compared to where you can see here the um, dubious have started pooping a lot more because I've been giving them a lot more food and uh, I have a hot hide I mean not hot hide I have a heat pad you can see here under this corner and it's a one to five as well and uh, their tank gets misted every two days and uh, they have a wash rag that's on the front to keep in the humidity and then they've got a paper towel right here. So that 
is what I have my feeder insects in. Put that back up there. Oh, now it's kind of tipping. That's bugging me. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so now I'll just kind of talk about the leopard gecko, and I feel like this video is going to be so long. I hope you guys watch it, because <laughs> it's, yeah, it's going to be long. I just feel like I talk too much. I'll probably edit this stuff so it's not too terrible. But uh, now I'll just kind of talk about experience. Um, if you're leopard gecko, because mine has had did this before, um, just because we're, when you first buy them, it does say to give them like three days to kind of feel comfortable in their home before you go handling them. Just let them adjust. And I didn't do this <laughs> just because I had my crested gecko already and I'm like, you know, I'm good with reptiles. I think she'll be fine if I hold her tonight. Well, she was real jumpy and everything, you know, from being at the pet store. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just give her her space. And so I left her alone for, I think, around four days. I didn't touch her or anything. And I think it, it did help because when I went to hold her, she didn't squeak at me anymore because she did used to squeak at me so much. It was pretty amusing. But uh, there was one time when she decided she didn't want to eat anything. And a lot of people have this problem. <laughs> But uh, it can be a lot of stuff, but with her, it was just she was being picky. She didn't want any millworms. And I had bought millworms, superworms, and dubias. And that's how I got my dubias and my millworms in the first place. None of my superworms ever pupated into beetles, so I didn't breed any of them. And uh, I did feed them to my leopard gecko, but I didn't like them. They were extremely aggressive. They, uh... Uh were just a real pain to feed, really. And they were real hard to take care of. Like, if you didn't have the temperature right, and you didn't have the proper type of food in there, they died really quick. Um, it's just a lot easier to take care of millworms. You just give them some oats, you put some carrots in there. I know that it's relatively the same for superworms, but I didn't have as good a luck with them. <clears throat> I do not recommend feeding only millworms because they're not as high in protein as crickets or dubias are. And uh, they're just not as nutritious because there's hardly any meat on that little insect that's mainly covered with an exoskeleton. <laughs> so I do feed them to her, but I feed them to her with crickets. So like I'll give her eight crickets and I'll give her eight uh, mealworms. That way she's getting equal amounts of both, even though the mealworm, it probably would be like three or four it'd take to equal the same as a cricket. Just because there's hardly, like I said, any meat in there. <laughs> And so, um, but one way I've found that I can get my reptiles to eat stuff most of the time is this may sound bad and it doesn't bother me, but it might bother some people. Just use a pair of scissors or take the tweezers and pop the head off the insect. <laughs> it may sound gross, but it works really well. Just take the insect's body and put it near the leopard gecko's mouth, kind of rub the juices on its mouth. And when it goes to lick to clean its face, Make sure the cricket or the millworm or whatever is near its mouth. And normally it en it's encouraged to bite the cricket because now it's tasting the juices and it's like, hmm, that tastes pretty good. So that's the way I've gotten most of my reluctant eaters to take crickets. When I got uh, Ember, which is my first crested gecko, at PetSmart, she had never been feeding in fed insects ever. I could tell because she wouldn't touch them. I had bought her crickets a month after I got her, and I couldn't figure out how the heck do I get her to eat crickets. She wouldn't eat them, she wouldn't even look at them. So, it was probably like almost half a year later, and I was like, okay, let's try crickets again. She's a little bit older, maybe she'll take them. So, no, she didn't want them. So, I'm like, okay, let's cut the head off. <laughs> the, te the moment I cut the head off and put the juices on her, she immediately ate the cricket. So I was, when I got my leopard gecko and she started being all picky, I tried that and it worked. And now she really loves dubias. And she likes crickets, but dubias are preferred for her, which I guess they must taste a lot better because she really likes them. <laughs> so handling-wise, you want to be careful. Don't ever pull on the tail. I've seen so many people pulling on the tail or holding them or picking them up by the tail. Don't do that. <laughs> if you want them to drop your tail, then you can. But don't do that. It stresses them out. They don't like their paws, their feet, whatever, hanging from, you know, not being able to grip anything. They don't like being, you know, strung up like that. They like 
when all four of their hands or their paws or whatever, their feet, all four of their feet are touching the ground or your hand and their tail is resting on you. They do not like being held by the tail. That's just stupid when people do that. It, it's just common sense. You don't pick an animal up by the tail. You don't grab a dog by the tail. And if you do, that's me. You don't grab a cat by the tail. That's just stupid. Because unlike dogs, cats are crazy and they will come back and get you for it. <laughs> Normally biting you or scratching you. Um, I would never do that to one of my cats, and it's just cruel to pull on any animal's tail, so don't do it to a reptile. Especially one that will drop its tail. That's just terrible to do that, because all their food stores are in there. Uh, which, that's another thing. Leopard geckos store food in their tails. So if they end up going a month or so without food, let's say if you have a female that's going to be producing eggs, um... Make sure she's up to a specific weight. You want to have calcium available all the time. Just so that she has enough to produce eggs. Some females, even if you don't breed, will produce real will produce infertile eggs. It happens. Sometimes it happens. I don't know if Eclipse will ever do it. But, you know, she's a little over a year. So we'll see. I don't know. But, yeah. Anyway, if I keep talking, this video is going to be so long. So... <laughs> If you have any questions just leave them in the comments I will suggest real quick that if you type in leopard gecko on YouTube hopefully you'll find this one woman's channel she is so knowledgeable with crest uh, with leopard geckos she does have crested geckos as well but leopard geckos is her main subject that she does she is so knowledgeable I have watched her videos before and it has been just so helpful and it might even be have a picture that says leopard gecko talk but she, I would definitely suggest looking up. She's a British woman, and I really love her accent and everything. She is so knowledgeable with what she talks about. And it's really great to see people out there on YouTube. They're giving out actual information that's not fake or false, and they actually did their research. <laughs> so, oh, that reminds me. Okay, it's a good thing I was talking. I'll show you some books that are really good to check out if you want to get a letter. Okay, so here's my books that I read about leopard geckos. I got the leopard gecko manual that's right here. Okay, there's the guy's name, um, which I can't pronounce, but this is the guy who wrote it. He also wrote one for ball python. Wait, no, not by ball pythons. Forget that. He wrote one for crusty geckos and green and olds because I have both of those as well. And then I read this one as well. I didn't read the whole thing, just mainly it goes over a lot of stuff that this does, but a little bit more into depth. So this is a really good book. This just kind of gives you the information directly, you know, it doesn't string it out too much like this does. But this, like I said, is really good and informative. It's very important to read at least one of these, if not both. Um, though this one does say in here, because it's older, to use sand, and that's another thing. Don't ever use sand in your leopard gecko's tank, because if it eats it, it will indefinitely become impacted, because it can't pass sand through... You know, it just gets clogged up in the abdomen and it just stays there. Because sand's real heavy and the leopard gecko just can't pass it. So, yeah, I would just avoid using any other substrate than Eco Earth. Um, and if you do want to use something different, um, tile is another thing people use. And paper towels, but you will have to clean those every day. Because, like I said, the leopard geckos, they do go to the bathroom at least once every day, if not more. So... I think I'll go ahead and end the video here. Oh my goodness, I had to sneeze. Uh, so I'll go ahead and end the video here. Thanks for watching, guys, if you stayed all the way to the end. I'm so sorry this was like a gajillion minutes long. <laughs> but I get really into it when I'm talking about stuff that I care about. And caring for animals, above all, is so important to me. And if I'm doing something wrong, I definitely want to be told it because I don't like doing stuff wrong when it comes to my animals. They're extremely important to me, and their well-being and their care and everything. So, if you ever have constructive criticism on stuff I could change, unless I already know it and I'm already working towards changing it, then I will definitely accept any criticism or any advice or anything. Because with the reptiles and with my animals in general, it's so important for people to help each other out. <laughs> So, it, I just find too much on YouTube where people are either criticizing, oh, well, you're not doing this right, and they don't even tell you how to fix it. They just, you know, chew your head off. Or they're super nice and they, oh, well, great video, but they just don't give you 
the criticism you're looking for to know if you're doing it right or not. <laughs> so, yeah, if you ever see something that's not right with one of my tanks, do tell me because I would like to know. <laughs> I Even though I've had them for a while, I still am kind of new because I'm under five years with reptiles. So I'm going to have my crested gecko for a couple years now, but that's the oldest reptile I've got. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask or go check out Leopard Gecko's uh, channel and have a good day.